big disclaimer before you watch this video. If you haven't yet seen my previous video titled Where to Start with a Bird That Hates You, go back and watch that video first. It has some very important key tips and points on things that we worked on before you're about to see the things we implemented in this video. So, Originally, Michelle was not able to get close to this bird without this bird lunging and trying to bite her. We had to apply a lot of other tips and tricks before doing what you're about to see us attempt. And I don't want anyone to just jump to the steps in this video without knowing to apply those other things first. So that's why the two videos sort of go together. Just keep in mind there's steps that you need to take before attempting what you're about to see us attempt in this video. Harley, I can't pick her up. She tries to bite me. She just prefers him. So now we're trying to incorporate um, me being able to do some tricks with her so she's not trying to, you know, get me. So it was very successful yesterday with the spinning and stuff. So I was really happy. Yeah, yeah and we've made really good progress in the last two days, specifically with Michelle, who was terrified to getting uh, a very soft, gentle target to then being able to get close and give a cue, sp a cue to spin. And overall, Harley's demeanor has been much more, calm. I don't want to quite say passive, but a lot more calm. The first thing we realized through watching Mike train with Harley the macaw is how close he stands. Because of his background in training dogs, he's really used to being up close and personal with his animals. And so that's no exception here with this macaw. Also, Harley has kind of taken to him. And so he just finds it natural and easier to be close and really uptight with her. You can see I can barely get a shot here because he's so close with Harley. One of our goals is to get other people to be able to work with her and because they won't want to be that close with her it just gets a little sticky when she doesn't actually like the person we have to work on creating some distance between Mike and Harley when they actually train so that's what we focus on we actually focus on retraining the things he's already trained such as tricks like spin or step up and we start creating distance between him and Harley and how that translates is now other people can come up at that that safe distance and cue Harley to do these same tricks, especially now that Mike started with her and got her sort of into a training mode and created momentum for her to be excited about these treats. Now other people can come in like Michelle, keep her calm, make sure that we only click when she's showing us calm behavior while doing these behaviors and we get the same results. So really, really cool. But one of the things you have to be mindful of is how you're training your bird and how that might affect other people trying to come in and get the same result. We don't only have Michelle work with Harley. My husband Dave works with Harley. I work with Harley. We have people at our master classes you see here who are also friends of Mike and Michelle's work with Harley. We want to know that the behaviors that she has learned from Mike are solid, solidified, and she fully understands the training, which means anybody can give the cue. So to establish training mode, we have Harley respond to anyone willing to cue her. So there's some slight accents between how people give cues and we do work through those. So you might see us backtrack and go back to targeting and maybe do a little bit of retraining, but I've kind of cut out those to just sort of keep this video moving and keep up the pace for you guys. But just know that everybody speaks with a slight accent when training. So you might give a cue just subtly different than somebody else that the bird needs to get used to. So somebody might really move their hand a lot while somebody else might just barely move their hand. Somebody might move their body or lean into it. Everybody just does things subtly different and a bird needs to get accustomed to those accents when training. That's what we like to call them anyway. So we're gonna try something a little bit different. Um, one, we're gonna clean up Mike's step up because the last thing was like, it was a command, we need to be permission based. Also, as you guys all witnessed, once we got her in training mode, she was offering more tricks. So we need to recondition her that step up is a trick. Okay. Just as you taught the spin and we transferred it to everybody in the room, the overall goal would be for you to reteach step up as a trick and then we all get to be able to have that transfer yeah, to us. Okay. Um, since she seems to prefer males, we'll start with you. Yeah. And then, then I'll try. Okay. Uh, if that's still working well, then we'll give Jamie a try and then we'll kind of gauge it from there if we want to keep pushing or not. Because okay. we may not at that point. No, makes sense. Right. You want to step up? Very clear body language, she was willing to step up. 
and her posturing was up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I saw, saw that. Do you, will you try having her step up? Oh, yeah. Here, I get a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah. She's so offended. Do you want, do you want me to do any warm ups at all? Was she this puppy with you? Yeah. Can you step up? You're shaking. <laughs> that is huge. Oh yeah, but I She's never stepped up on anyone but me and Dave. Alright, All right, Michelle, come on over here by me, please. Mm -hmm. And I just want your presence there while Jamie does another one. Can you step up? Can you mirror that? Yep. Can you use a big tree for this. And if at any point you don't feel like it, she was doing it. Yep, yep, yep. Hold it, pet Awesome. Good job. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Oh my god. Come on, Dave. I'm so happy. You did it. You did it. <laughs> She did it for me. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. You know, did you see her hesitate? Yeah. She is it because of she me was like, yeah, she was like, she was gonna lady. do it. Gonna step up. Yeah, That's so she was awesome. in. How are we gonna make it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I really am. Thank you. Get momentum. Okay. Good. Harley, step up. Do you want to? I do. Amazing. Girl. We'll end it there for you. Oh, thank, well. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. That's huge, huge for me. Yeah. Huge. Awesome. This, if you saw it, well, you will when this video comes out. <laughs> two days ago. Oh. Yesterday was tears for like just spinning. And, yeah. and to get the step up today is like. Huge. We just, we went from like not being able to walk to running a 5k. <laughs> she, was, she was patiently waiting for you. She's she like, was. She was. like, lady, will yeah, you put your hand on. in there? Yeah. Step up. The key thing to take away from this is we got her in a rhythm. Yes. We got her in rhythm. No. We saw that she's in training mode. We started with the target stick and, and everybody did the target and then they gave the cue. If she wasn't responsive to the cue, we did another couple of targets and gave her the cue. And it was just like, we created a... Uh, mm -hmm. behavioral momentum or kind of like playing Simon Says, mm -hmm. right? We got her in this rhythm and then she's like, cool, this is a trick. This is a trick. And that just highlights how important step up as a trick mm -hmm. really is. People is. need to, yeah. to lock that in because having her step up to you because she, she wants to, forget it. Right. Okay. Right. But doing it as a trick because yes. she wants to earn part of her breakfast because right. she hasn't eaten because she slept for 12 hours mm -hmm. and it's now breakfast time. Yeah. But that's why when we did target training, we put calm target on cue. It was like touch yes. with the tongue. It yes. wasn't bite the stick. Uh -huh. It was the most calm target we could get. And then even giving the treat was paired with a really calm behavior. Because so you became paired with calm. Right. Me. All right, Michelle. <laughs> I learned <laughs> that I can overcome fear with a bird that's 21 years old that I couldn't pick up. And now I can pick her up. The, that is so huge for me. Um, it's like a miracle, really, <laughs> for me, because um, I really doubted myself. So this was top, just ecstatic, over the moon for me. And I'm just really excited for our future together. I really am. <laughs> So the very next day, we pick up from having Mike start with Harley, then Dave, and then instead of me, we cut out the middle woman, and we just go straight to Michelle, which is incredibly exciting. So as you can see here, Mike is initiating training with Harley, getting her sort of responsive into a training mode, teaching her that like, hey, it's time to earn some treats. Are you receptive? And we know that if she is receptive to him, she'll most likely be receptive to the next person. And we just slowly phase into everybody from there. But it goes much faster than the day before because Harley's used to this cycle and she knows what all of this means. The one thing that we have to be super mindful of is her behavior and making sure not to train in a crazy heightened state. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like to go from Mike to Dave to eventually Michelle.
So your body posture, everything that you were like, that I saw was, do you want to? And you're looking for a reason. And she was like, yeah, I want to. Mm -hmm. So it was that, that communication that was silent. Mm -hmm. you, could you feel yeah. that? You could feel it, right? Yep. There's a slight vocal. Yeah, she did. But I don't, I think it was more like a murmur versus like a heightened. I agree. Okay. She's waiting more for an invitation. Right. So see how it was a cue, but also a question. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'll go in. So with the stick, we're here, we pause. Are you going to reach? Cool, I'll meet you there. Absolutely. Nice. I think I'm done. I think nice. I'm Good job. I didn't expect that other, that other step up. I thought you'd just book it with some, you know, spin and target. And you're like, oh, this feels good. I'm reading yeah. her well. I can get a step up. I'm going for it. Do you want to? Hell yeah. All right, let's do it. Good job. That's great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike, and this is Michelle. Hello. We live in Connecticut. The one thing I can say, probably the biggest piece of advice to anybody is what you always hear from Dave and Jamie is find one trainer find one process and buy into it and stick to it. And that's kind of what we did. I started watching videos nonstop. We got a bunch of the content that Dave and Jamie have. During that process, we started doing consults with Jamie and then Dave. We signed up to do a master class in our home. And we also had a couple of days on one-on-one. -on -one. And what I gotta say is that really changed our life with our flock. Michelle could not handle Harley, couldn't even get close. And honestly, when we got her, it took me a couple weeks to even get near her cage. Um, mm -hmm. She was very fearful, which turned into aggression. Mm -hmm. And we just had no clue what we were doing. All that we learned in the weekend that Dave and Jamie were here has done nothing but change the relationship with our whole flock. That is very true. Um, Michelle is able to handle Harley and she's comfortable with her. The other three birds are doing amazing. I've always loved birds. I've always had birds. Um, I didn't do it right. You know, we were taught differently. But um, having Jamie and David come into our life and help us change everything about what we thought was right has helped and, you know, with the birds, the connection with the birds, the, the way we interact, um, their hormones, just everything, they're calmer. They're just more of a joy to be around and to be able to handle. When they came out, I really didn't think at the time I was gonna be able to handle her. So it's, it's been a really good journey with them. And I've learned a lot about myself too, so. Um, with Jamie and David there, I think they're amazing. They help you um, overcome things with the birds. They're very smart and knowledgeable. Um, I couldn't say anything more about them. They're amazing people and very friendly. They make you feel like you've known them forever. Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> it was really hard for me being a big dog trainer, macho biker, and all of a sudden I got this little thing, Jamie telling me everything I'm doing wrong, <laughs> and Dave, you know, how can you get mad at him? Because every time he's busting you, he's doing it in a parrot voice. So it kind of just <laughs> makes it easier to accept. But all joking aside, they really gave us the insight we needed to have the relationship that we wanted with our birds. Mm -hmm. There was so much we were misinterpreting, so much we were doing wrong. 
And now that we're speaking their language and they understand what we want and we understand what they're trying to express to us, the relationship has just grown immensely. Mm. It's just, we really enjoy them. 